Hi, welcome back. Now, there's two questions that I see quite regularly and also I get asked very often. Number one, what should I buy as my first radio? And number two, is the Bofeng any good? Now, in a kind of way, these are the same question. So what I'd like to deal with today is answering those questions and hopefully give you a little bit of an insight into my own personal experience. So let's have a look. Okay, so I've called the video My First Radio, uh, or Should I Buy a Bow Thing? Um, I'd just like to tackle a few of the myths and a few of the misconceptions and a little bit of the amateur radio snobbery around this issue. So, first things first, knowledge is power. This hobby is all about learning. And one of the key mistakes that you can make is to go out and buy a radio, irrelevant of cost or brand or, or anything, and pick it up and assume that you're going to know how to use it if you've done no training, okay? Number one, you might get it wrong and you might cause interference or a nuisance. But number two, the one thing that I can guarantee you is you won't enjoy the experience and you'll probably sit there after a few days or weeks and contemplate whether you've wasted your money because you won't be getting the most out of the product. At the start of the hobby, you're going to hear loads and loads of stuff that doesn't make any sense. All of these are words and acronyms uh, that you may or may not have ever heard before. And I can virtually guarantee that if you have heard them, they won't mean the same thing in our hobby. So these are all things that in order to make any sense of what people are talking about, you're going to have to do some homework. A great place to start is to join a club. Okay, now typically whenever I do these videos, I'm normally talking about here in the UK. Obviously, I know that I have got an audience in other parts of the world, and forgive me for that, but most of my audience is in the UK, so most of what I talk about is UK centric. However, I know that you guys over in the US, for instance, have got great clubs. So wherever you are, Seek out your nearest club and join it. They will be the best place that you can start learning and start gaining information. The Bofeng radios are really cheap. As you can see here, you can pick them up for not a lot of money, okay? Amazon, eBay, all of these places sell Bofeng radios. And in comparison to most amateur radio equipment, it's very, very cost effective. So my Bofeng radio lives in my garage. And the first thing I do when I go in the garage is switch on the switches, which turns on the LED overhead lights. And my Bofeng radio that has sat there for the last three years powers up, okay? It's virtually on charge probably 10 hours a day for the last three years. And it still works as good as it did the day that I bought it. The battery is still perfect. This is my little radio, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of it. Um, it's called a, a GT3TP, which uh, is kind of like the high-power version. I think it's supposed to put out 8 watts, but don't be impressed by that, because typically they all put out roughly the same power, and an increase of a little bit of power is not going to make any difference. Um, me personally, I think this is a very well constructed radio, especially when you consider the price. It's got a removable battery. Typically when you buy these, they come with the aerial, they come with a battery, they come with a charger. Um, I normally swap out the aerial for a better quality aerial, and normally I put one of these little adapters on it, which enables me to use the same aerial for my Bofeng radio as I do for my other radios. The ones that I prefer are these, the diamond antennas. They're better performance, definitely, than the ones that you get with the radio. So first thing you do is take the aerial off, throw it in the bin and replace it with a better quality uh, aerial. This is it side by side with my Yaesu FT60. 
which is a well, very well respected handheld radio. Again, same kind of technology, dual band, UHF and VHF, very similar size, very similar weight. And I would actually say for the price, the Bowfeng is probably a bit of value for money, let's say that. However, I don't use the Bowfeng as much as um, I do the Yaesu. The, um, there are a few downsides to the Bowfeng, but does it make it worth, um, I don't know, three, four times the money? Probably not, to be totally honest with you. The first thing to do when you've got your radio is to download this free piece of software called Chirp. Um, this will enable you to be able to program the radio up. And what's quite encouraging as well is, if you look at the amount of radios from Bofeng that Chirp supports, it's probably more than any other manufacturer. So that says something, I think. You should get a little cable, actually, with the kit that you buy, but if you don't, you can always buy one off, uh, e off eBay. And literally, connecting your, your new radio to your laptop or your PC will enable you to program it up with all of the local repeaters and the offsets for those and the CTCSS tones and probably doesn't make any sense with you at the moment. So anyway, what can you do with this new radio that you've just got? Well, number one, you can only listen unless you've got a license to transmit. That's key, okay? Doesn't matter which part of the world you're in, you need a license. If you transmit, then you're breaking the law, okay? And also, if somebody answers you in the knowledge that you haven't got a license, then they're also breaking the law. Now, in terms of getting your license, it's not hard, okay? If this was really, really hard, then I can understand why people do it. But it is so easy that there's no excuse, okay? So whatever part of the world that you're in, just type into Google, get ham radio license, for instance. Here in the UK, You'll, you'll find the RSGB, the Radio Society of Great Britain. There's their website, you can go directly to it. And when you do that, you'll find this page and it tells you all about what you need to do to take the exam to become a radio ham, okay? Now, I won't go all into it. I've done other videos that talk about how to pass your test and all that kind of stuff. Um, but simply put, this is now an online exam. You don't even have to get out of your, your, your chair to take the exam. You do it online. It's so simple. We've got, we've got youngsters of seven and eight passing this exam, okay? So please, look into doing your, your training for your exam. If nothing else, then it will help you enjoy your new radio. So anyway, the good and the bad about um, the Bowfeng radio. Number one, it's cheap. It is cheap. Number two, you've got two bands on it, at least. You know, some of them have actually got more than that. But anyway, two bands, which means that you can um, use both UHF and VHF. And also, it's good quality. In comparison to my Yaesu radio, which probably costs three times more, maybe more, um, it's great quality. Some people, if you look at some people talking about the Bofeng radios, they'll be talking about the poor front end, which may mean absolutely nothing at all to you. So, if I took both of my radios up a hill, and on top of that hill, very often you'll find transmitters for all sorts of different radio services. With my Bofeng radio, because there's a strong source of radio transmission very nearby, what that will do is it will desensitize the receiver so there's a good chance I won't receive anybody while I'm stood on top of that hill. With my Yaesu radio, because it's got a better front end, it means that the filtering inside it, even though there is a strong source of radio transmission nearby, it shouldn't affect it too much. I'm not saying it won't affect it at all, but not as much as the cheaper both ends, okay? Also, the user interface is quite annoying. It's um, Chinese English, and uh, and that's the first thing that you do is to turn it off, along with the the standard Roger bleep, which is super annoying. Documentation is rubbish. So the first thing that you do when you get the radio is throw the documentation in the bin, turn off the Roger bleep, 
turn off the voice announcements, throw the antenna in the bin. So things that you need to do, don't expect that you can get this out of the box, switch it on, sit down um, in front of the television and listen to loads of people talking because it probably won't happen unless you live on top of a mountain in the centre of the local town, then you're probably not going to hear anybody and very quickly you're going to get disappointed, you're going to believe it's rubbish and you're probably going to stick it back in the box and send it back to the seller. Okay, so that's the bad news. The fact is, this is a handheld radio with a rubber duck antenna, so it's never ever going to be brilliant. As I say, the antenna that comes with it is rubbish, get rid of it, buy a new one, preferably from a really decent manufacturer like Diamond. Don't get um, sucked into buying it off eBay and it costing £2, when it should cost £20, because that's not going to work. You'll get better results by sticking a banana on top of the radio. Buy it for the price that it should cost. Buy it from a proper source and spend the money on a good aerial. That is key. Get the Chirp software because that's going to allow you to program it up and take your test. Because once you've done all that, you'll then be able to talk. Get out of your house, get off up a hill, um, preferably somewhere near where there's a, a population of people. Switch it on or hear people talking. That's when the enjoyment starts. Is it any good? That's the question that was asked. Yeah, absolutely it's good. I would use one. I've still got one. I've had one for three years. And I think, truth be told, most amateurs out there have got a bow thing on their shelf. Price performance ratio, absolutely. It's excellent. It's not, okay, as good as the Yaesu, but it's also not three or four times worse than the Yaesu. Should you buy one? Yeah, why not? What have you got to lose? It's £30. If you get it wrong, you've lost £30. If you get it right, trust me, you're going to end up spending a lot, lot more than £30 on this hobby. So it's a small price to pay to dip your toe in the water. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, as you can see, I'm passionate about radio, so I think it's a great hobby. And I've got a bow friend that I've enjoyed for many, many years and many years to come. So. Get in there, buy yourself a bow thing, switch it on, get listening, take your test, learn lots and enjoy the hobby. Take care for now. Bye bye.